Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, today's webinar will be, will be discussing the CPA and Clarivate merger um, that took place earlier this year. Uh, and we'll be discussing how it affects the IP industry as well. Um, this webinar was brought to you by Pekama um, and organized by Cosmonauts. Uh, just to give you a quick introduction, uh, my name is Victoria. I'm the product lead uh, at Pekama. And our speakers today are Melanie Carmusino from Microsoft. She's the director of IP there. And uh, Raymond J. Haggerty, um, who is the C-suite IP coach at Billion Dollar IP Strategy and the chief intellectual property officer at Everseen. Um, so I'll let you introduce yourselves as well. So uh, Raymond, if you would like to start off. Oh, well, thank you for the introduction. I, I work as an IP coach and an IP strategist. I've worked as a practitioner in the IP business for about, uh, for about two decades now. And I'm really looking forward to this interchange today. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Melanie's presentation. And I hope that we can get some good questions from the people who are coming on the line as well. Thank you, Raymond. And Melanie? Yes, hi everyone. My name is Melanie Carmesino. I'm the Director of IP Operations at Microsoft. I've been in the intellectual property space for about 30 years, starting off as a legal secretary and moving all the way up the gamut over my life. Um, I've had the experience of working with both CPA Global and Clarivate, formerly with Thompson, through my whole career. And so I'm looking forward to uh, sharing my experiences and thoughts there as well. Thank you. Um, and Melanie, as well, you have a presentation prepared for us today? Sure. I thought I'd just go through a, a general overview of how Microsoft currently uses um, CPA and Clarivate, and now both, um, in our IP group. Thank you. Okay. Let's start. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm learning here in this. Okay. Next. There we go. Um, so I started with Microsoft in November of 2013, and one of and we had already been working with CPA Global, and we were working with uh, formerly Thomson Reuters uh, using MDC. Um, we were with a different system uh, called Anaqua, and so we were you know working across multiple vendors. One of the first things that uh, and most expansive things we've done with CPA is to migrate um, what on the left you see was our former ecosystem of um, Anaqua and seven disparate SharePoint sites and, and all of that being hosted on premise and moving all of that to the cloud uh, using Memotech. So now we use Memotech as an end-to-end -end cloud hosted solution for all of our IP work, um, patents, trademarks, copyrights, uh, trade secret repository, licensing agreements, IP reviews. And so that is a major backbone of our overall relationship. Uh, in addition, uh, we have an extensive offshore services team that has grown over time. Uh, when I first started, we were again spread across three different vendors, Wipro, Black Hills IP, CPA, and CPA was primarily doing um, uh, I would call it proofreading and some records management. And we've really consolidated and expanded that to where we now have over 100 people in India that manage all of these services. So everything from uh, once the idea is submitted and creating those records all the way through docketing, paying inventor awards and managing inventor queries, uh, they manage all of our IDS work. They also prepare all of our PCT applications for our attorney signature and they file those. Uh, we have acquisition support. Uh, all of our annuity management, again, is now with CPA. Um, they also have an expansive team in Europe that does title review. And uh, about four years ago, five years ago, uh, we decided to reassign all of our patents, our utility patents from Microsoft Corporation to Microsoft Technology Licensing. And so that is a 90,000 asset uh, worldwide assignment project that has gone very well. They do help us manage large projects um, of various natures. And we also have engineering services that we use uh, for our prior art searching, patent analysis, uh, putting what we call metrics, target metrics and core metrics around likelihood of use, ease of detection, things like that to help us in our analysis work. Um, they also help coordinate the Memotech workflow design between our in-house team and, and their group. And um, what's also very beneficial is by using their system and their docketing teams, 
when we go through system upgrades, um, they're there to help us with the user acceptance training, documentation, and things like that. Um, and how we use their technology, uh, I'll talk a little bit about anography as well as Derwent, but we are extensive users of, of CPA Global's anography tool. Um, we do a lot of our competitor analysis searching. Um, you know, again, you can you can read this directly, but this is used across our licensing teams, engineering teams, um, and our attorney teams, as well as paralegals to do, um, uh, like I said, competitor analysis and portfolio analysis, taxonomy searches, and things of that nature. In addition, we have also been users of Derwent for many years um, and not used to the same scale that uh, we use anography, but, you know, Derwent has certain features that anography does not. And so we really, um, you know, have been, like I said, we've been working with both organizations since I've been there for seven years and I think for a good half a dozen years prior to that. So I really just sort of wanted to frame the Microsoft relationship and our familiarity with both of those vendors. I don't know if anyone has any questions on that. Um, another area where we partner with CPA Global, as well as um, an organization called Duff and Phelps, is uh, after undergoing that extensive ecosystem replacement, you learn many, many lessons um, and best practices. And so we have partnered with CPA as our sponsor in CLOC, Corporate Legal Operations Consortium, uh, which is, I think, pretty well known now, it's it's less than a decade old, and I am the chair of the IP Proficiencies Committee for CLOC. Um, and so you'll see CLOC has these 12 core competencies and we rest in the practice operations um, category. And really the goal of that has been to identify um, best practices or in the areas of people, process, technology, policies, third-party support, enforcement monetization. We have extensive matrices built out for patents, trademarks, copyrights, and litigation, and we are near completion on our trade secrets. Um, and so all of this information, if you go to CLOCK, and, and I would strongly recommend someone in your organization be a member. They have incredible information across all 12 of the of the competencies. Um, but there's a matrix of sort of how, where you, how you can evaluate yourself and your operational maturity um, and how you can evolve in, in various areas. And then there's also activities that, and you know um, actual steps that you can take to get yourself from foundational to mature to advanced. Um, and so again, this is just meant to be a broad overview of Microsoft's relationship with CPA Global and Clarivate in the IP space. Thank you for the presentation, Melanie. Um, in the meantime, there was a question from the public, uh, and just to let you know, this will be recorded as well, so it will be sent to everyone who registered. Okay. Um, so it's very interesting. It's good that we have, I think, uh, a, both a user of CP and Clarivate and someone who's very experienced in the IP industry, but not necessarily use, have used uh, um, either of them. So it will be interesting to hear what your opinions are, what are the pros and the cons of this merger and how do you think it will impact, impact the customers as well? And um, Melanie, you can, I guess, speak from experience sure. as well. Um, sure. Let's start with you. Okay. Yeah, I actually, <clears throat> I think this merger is a positive thing. Um, I think that <clears throat> it brings together the best of the best in terms of, of capabilities and, and um, both sides have different strengths. Um, I think that this is, you know, I know there's some concerns around, oh, well, if I use one or not the other or both, how is this going to play out? And I, I do think that this is, um, I think unlike most organizations, um, all the solutions that they bring together, I mean, you're talking world-class brands and leaders in IP data, patent, trademark research services, and domain management. And I think bringing in, you know, this is all underpinned by Clarivate's sort of market-leading IP data. They really are, um, have those strengths. And I think this is going to help organizations really proactively identify and mitigate risks. I think it's going to accelerate some innovation. Again, you're bringing together two incredible organizations of capabilities. Um, I see strength in their, their software development and, you know, um, the, the technology aptitude, the experts that they have, especially around data. And data is, I know people say data is the new oil. We say data is the new bacon because bacon makes everything better. Um, and so I think you're going to see a lot of strength in that space. I think it will reduce some, some barriers to 
um, Clarivate's leading content and data through, you know, some direct access to customers' unique workflows and different platforms. I think it's going to empower customers more. Um, again, I think, like I said, you're just bringing together the best of the best. So I was excited about this particular merger. Um, I don't think it's going to negatively impact their customers. In fact, I think it's going to harmonize and synergize. Like I said, we use Derwent here and Inography here, and I'm anxious to see how they bring all of that together and, and what an ultimate product may look like in that space. Thank you. And Raymond, uh, your sound. Yeah. I beg your pardon. Yes, I've used Inography and Der Derwent at various times as well in the past. And I was interested to see, first of all, it was a big headline uh, merger in the industry. And if you go back to the press releases around the time that it happened, uh, when you ask about the pros and cons, uh, the press release was very heavy on what the pros are for the two companies and also what they think the benefits could be to customers. I agree with Melanie about the uh, availability of the different tools and people have favorite tools within the different portfolios, but it isn't as if they're going to lose one or the other that they're going to continue um, for the foreseeable future, supporting the uh, important functionalities. And as Melanie said, they're uh, some of the top uh, brands in the world in the support for IP. The, some of the benefits the company mentioned as well, they talked about uh, things such as uh, cost savings and tax savings. And if they have uh, operations both in the USA and in Europe, you can see that there could be some uh, ability to be able to take some tax benefit from this that wouldn't be of disadvantage to the customers in general. Um, you could say that in the areas that there's overlap that both sides have now eliminated one big customer um, or one big competitor. So it may have reduced some of the competition in the area and that some people will be a little bit nervous as to what that could do for them as well. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, the I, major IP um, service providers are definitely, there's less and less. Um, and do you think, Clarate actually has mentioned uh, in one of their press release that they continue to invest in product development and m and opportunities. Um, do you think this would lead to an unfair competition within the IP industry? Um, Raymond? Um, um, well, when you say unfair competition, that this was announced several months ago and it had to go for review with the various competition authorities around the world to yeah. see did it have an effect on competition. So there is very good regulation of the competitive environment. Um, another thing that were regulated is actually the market forces. Um, when you see two big companies coming together like this, it's, it's typical in a merger that they will have a lot of internal meetings reassuring people that things are not going to change. But if they're talking about saving costs and if there are some overlaps, and despite them having separate offerings, there are some overlaps in what they have to do as well. So you can expect that there will probably be some job losses. And whenever there's fear of potential job losses, there's a strong chance that you could lose some of your really top people who will either go to competitors or maybe even start up smaller outfits themselves in competition on particular functions. So there's possibilities of more competition coming because of this merger as well. Yeah, of course. And yeah, I think that's a, yeah, that's a great point, Raymond. I mean, I think if I had a dollar for every vendor that called me that offered one of these services or had a new tool or could do whatever either company could do, I could retire. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> count how many of those I get. And so I think, you, you know, to your point, um, I'm hoping they don't lose the best talent. Uh, I think they'll be smart about that. But you're right, there will be some people that are carved off. Um, and, and you see about half of the time that results in another little upstart. There, there's huge capacity in this space. And yes. um, some people don't want to be with a large player. Some companies, um, you know, what they don't have the funding for that. They just want this offering or that offering. And so I, I do think that for those that are concerned with price, like you said, there are many other options. Um, and regardless of, you know, M&A activity, there are new newcomers to this space all the time, especially um, out of India and in the data and research and analytics space. And, you know, especially with the emergence of AI technology and data, 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 uh, I, I just don't have concerns, especially around that space. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, and moving on, uh, CP actually mentioned that they work with 88% of the total, uh, the, the top global uh, patent filers. 
Uh, do you think this will change now that they've merged? Uh, as in, you know, if less prominent pa uh, patent filers, do you think uh, they'll also have access to um, both companies? Well, I can, yeah, sure. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think this merger represents the future, not just for Clarivate, but for the ISP space as a whole. I think, you know, bringing together these two, there's reduction of friction for customers and unlocking new capabilities um, that, that weren't possible by other providers in the market. I do think there's ample competitors in the space. Like I said, I think the combination of these two means the ability to operate with far greater scale and resources. So certainly they are a strong dominant player, but I think customers still have a choice even within that of particular tools or services um, and a respective vendor that can serve their needs. So I, I don't see this as limiting access. Um, like I said, I think you're going to have this huge organization that that is the best of the best, but there's there are lots of opportunities or options to to go a different direction or use different vendors as they all emerge yes thank you and raymond yeah and i'd add to that that now the you have this merged entity there will be a lot of expectations that they need to do something with it now and it's not just from cutting costs or taking advantage of scale and i think that they will actually reach out to a lot more people to try and see if they can bring in more customers as well so that will be a way that they will invite in some of the smaller players into uh, the same business. Thank you. Uh, actually, we have some questions from the public as well. So sure. I'll quickly ask that. Uh, do you see a difference in benefits for corporate customers versus intermediaries such as law firms or trademark agents? I can say I yeah I can say I don't I mean we we have we work with a lot of different law firms in the IP group and some many of whom uh, use CPA services especially renewals um, which you know uh, CPA had already acquired MDC two years ago and so I think that's I don't think you're going to see further impact there. Um, okay, thank you, you wanna... and Raymond. Yeah, um, I see that th there can be difference in benefits. What I would say as well, though, is that, um, Melanie, you said that data is the new bacon. Um, and what's happening, though, as well, though, is that, you know, there, there's a vegan movement as well. Um, <laughs> that I, I see that you know, people talk about data all the time, but in some ways data can be commoditized or viewed as a commodity. And... The people who are coming into CPA, that they're coming up from a level of just running themselves on spreadsheets and they come up to a level of higher level of sophistication. And there may be bridging between the spreadsheets and a very sophisticated solution. There's a lot of providers in countries, you mentioned India already, there's a lot of providers around the world who are really scrambling for that part of the business. You see also, um, when we talk about not just the giant companies, but the law firms as well, law firms are starting to see competition they're seeing things like AI coming in, where some of the lower end of what they're doing, that they're going to have to find a way to rationalize that. So just having access to data, you could say in some ways is a very mature market and that you may need to move further up the value chain. So I see, and if I wanted to be, uh, shall we say, dramatic about it, if you look at the example of Nokia back in the early 2000s, they were the biggest mobile phone handset company in the world. They had 30% market share, rising to a peak of 40% market share, just as the smartphones started to hit with Apple's iPhone. When the iPhone came in, you now had a high-end product, and Nokia didn't have a high-end product. And then you had Nokia in the middle, and they weren't able to compete with the low-end Chinese handsets either. So Nokia ended up stuck in the middle, where there was a very high-end market, there was a very low-end market, and the middle market just got squeezed. And I see it with this merged entity that they have competition from people like um, Aon and Deloitte and some of the large consultancy firms who want to take that high value added IP strategy business. And on the data end, they will have competition from some of the lower price competitors as well. So they will need to find one is to make use of their scale to be able to be more cost effective. And on the other side, that they need to be able to take the data that they have, a lot of data now, and use that to build insights and higher value offerings at the top end of this market as well. 
Would you agree with me, Melanie, or am I being a bit too No, dramatic? I think, no, no, you're not dramatic at all. I think that's a great analogy. And I think you're speaking from the data perspective. I would add that I think this merger brings together, when you talk about law firms versus corporate, you know, I think something CPA has done very well is they have a multitude of software offerings. They have yes. memo tech, which is great for in-house. They have impro tech, which is great for law firms. They have foundation IP, which is great for smaller portfolios. And I've, I've consulted with many people in that space on those tools. And so, you know, I think marrying all these capabilities together, you're right, there's an opportunity to be great, but they also have to be careful to deliver. Uh, there is a, there's a very high expectation now. And like I said, I think your analogy was spot on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and do you think that there will be consideration in the IP industry as well, Raymond? Well, if you look at where both um, CPA and Clarivate came from, that over the last few years, there has been a lot of changes of ownership in those companies and the value has been escalating. And it could be some of the values escalating through roll-ups and getting higher multiples on the businesses. Now that they have reached this size, I think that for CPA Clarivate, that they can't take advantage from that. So the synergies that they can get um, there's limitations on the synergies they can get. And as I say, there's other players who are snapping at their heels and uh, for the very small companies um, and for the medium-sized companies, there are possibilities for other roll-up acquisitions that could happen uh, outside the CPA Clarivate. Now, they have also said that they will be able to do some financial engineering from this and they still have an appetite for doing more acquisitions as well. So I think this is going to continue to be an interesting area. Yes. Right, yeah, I would I would agree with that. I think something, again, CPA, if you look over their past five years, they've done some very smart acquisitions. They acquired anography. Uh, they acquired first to file, which is the, you know, we, we love the trifold view of the patent folders and the document management capabilities there. And then they acquired MDC. And so I think there's always a natural tendency. I mean, as is the world, uh, there will may be some further consolidations. I don't know if you'll see some of these smaller companies try to merge together to really compete with them. And, you know, I can envision both CPA Clarivate making smart acquisitions in the future. Um, they do have some interesting competitors. Aon is, is a great example, and we're actually using Aon for a small capacity. So uh, I, I think that could happen. Uh, like you said, there's good regulation around this industry. I don't think there will ever be this massive monopoly. There will always be emerging competitors. Um, but I also think that CPA Clarivate will be very smart to potentially acquire anything that can expand their capabilities. I don't think they'll gobble companies up, but I think they'll look to how can they continue to improve um, the scale and the resources that they can offer. Thank you. Um, and do you think it will change the scale of, the, of pattern renewals? And if you think so, why? No, I, like I said earlier, I don't think so at all. This yeah. this acquisition of MDC happened in 2018, um, so it's already been there. Uh, I don't really see any impact beyond what's happened. Um, you know, law firms don't want to deal with this typically, and in-house companies don't want to deal with it. And so, you know, I think if anything, as they grow their customer base, they will grow grow that base as well. But I don't see a, a significant impact beyond already what's happened. Chris, thank you. And Raymond? Yeah, I agree with what Nelly said, that uh, the patent renewals will mainly be delivered by, d d driven by demand by the patent owners and that the services uh, seem to have stabilized that are supporting those as well. So I agree with Melanie. All right, thank you. Um, there's just one more question from the public. Um, uh, does the merger present any opportunities to smaller competitors? If so, what are they? I think you kind of covered it, but if you want to, if there's anything else you wanted to add to to that. Raymond, yeah, like, you take that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a good question. And, you know, as you know, the, the IP industry has continued evolving. Um, both Melanie and I have seen lots of changes in models over the years and nothing has ever um, consolidated on a single model. So you do have splintering off and new ideas coming and things bubbling up and things going away again. So I think there will be continuing to be opportunities to smaller companies. Um, smaller companies can take bets on things and uh, take their chances on it. And you know they're not going to be cannibalizing their own products. So they may see that there are uh, potential clients who are not well served by Clarivate and CPA. But as Melanie says, Clarivate and CPA are some really fine products. So um, they'll have the work cut out for them. 
And yeah, I think for yeah, I think for some, um, you know, price can be a concern. And and I'm not going to say that CPA Clarivate are the cheapest in the industry. They're not because they offer, you know, they have so many offerings in such huge scale. And so, like I said, if I had a dollar for every, uh, you know, uh, person that offered paralegal support service, engineering analysis services, or a tool that they have built, Dulcera, for example, has um, some really interesting technology as well. There are definitely competitors in that space that you can go to and, and you know, they hunger for getting one client and being able to evolve their business and, and grow. So I, I do think that that will continue. Um, thank you very much. Uh, it will definitely be um, interesting to see uh, how, how this will play out. Um, Takama as well, we are sort of a competitor. Uh, we do offer other services as well, um, but um, it will be a challenge, <laughs> but we'll see uh, how this will all, all uh, play out, I guess. Um, thank you very much for joining today. Um, as I said, it's been recorded, so we will send out the recordings to everyone as well. Um, and thank you, Raymond, as well, and Melanie for, for joining us today. Um, and we'll conclude today's webinar. Okay. So thank you, everybody. Bye.